So first we're going to begin with doing a straight line on the horizon. You can use painter's tape or a ruler for this. I just picked up a piece of scrap paper that I had to give me a kind of a guide. You'll also notice that I'm wearing gloves. I do use oil paints, which are pretty toxic. So I do usually wear gloves when I am painting. Once you have your horizon line in, you're going to go on the center and add a small half circle for your sunset. And then you're just going to sketch in some clouds. I like to sketch them smaller at the bottom, larger as they go to the top. I started with doing some wispy clouds and then I decided to actually go back and do more of a bubble cloud effect. If you're not sure what to do or if you're not if you don't love the style that I did you can always use a reference photo from nature to get the cloud outline that you would like in your sky this is called liquid original something I use with all of my oil paints what I do is I actually mix it into the paint directly. Usually almost half and half, um, probably a little bit less than that. But what it's going to do is actually, if you're using oil paints, the purpose of this is to make your dry time faster. So if you do a 50-50 mix, it actually will dry overnight. Um, and I've had to do this for shows. Um, please note that it will give it a glossy effect, so if you don't plan on sealing it with a high gloss varnish once the painting's completely cured, um, then it might be something that you want to stay away from. But I really enjoy it. I like that it makes my paint go further. It's also really great for mixing glazes. Um, so I'm going to mix this into each color. You can see here that I am using a filbert brush that has had better days. Um, but it's one of my favorite brushes and for this size canvas this is a great size for me to control the paint. I'm going to start by using my darkest color at the top. This is just straight blue. I've not mixed or diluted the color at all. And the color is sky blue. I will go ahead and list out all the colors in the comments. Thank you so much for painting with me today. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you can join me on my next painting adventure. It's important that you gradient your sky just like in nature. I do like to start with the darkest color on the top and kind of specifically into the left and right corners and I try to do this evenly. As I work my way down I'll either mix just white into that color or in this case I'm actually mixing a blue gray and white just to give it a more hazed effect as it hits the horizon. When we get closer to the horizon, I'm also going to add some orange and purple.
it's important that you have a blending brush, a long hair blending brush, or you can use a old fashioned two inch paintbrush um, for interior wall paint. That works very well for blending as well and the bristles will not come out. Um, so you can see that I'm doing small brush strokes and I'm doing lots of different shades of blue and gray and purple in the sky. And that's just going to give it a very realistic effect when I brush it all out. So make sure that you're going to blend this so that you have something to blend it if you're going to follow my style. Otherwise you do want to try to smooth the paint as you go. As I get closer to the bottom, you're going to notice that I'm brushing my paint upwards and to the right, and that is actually because my sky and my light is going to be coming from that angle, and so you can make yours straight on, you can make your centered, um, but every once in a while I like to make mine a little off center, showing, you know, just that the sky is round after all. Now that I'm at the horizon, I am adding in, it's a peach color, actually is my favorite. I use a peach and an orange color mixed together with a little bit of white. And I'm doing a very, very light underpainting of that on the horizon. You wanna keep your oranges closest to the sun. And on the outsides of that, you want to blend in your purples, pinks, or reds, any other colors that you do. Again, you'll see that I'm kind of angling up and away to create a globe-like effect. also see that my sun now looks black due to the pencil smudging with the oil paint. Don't worry about that. The best part about paint is that we can paint right over it again to make it whatever color we want. I really want this to be a bright orange sunset. So I am going in with a pretty deep orange color and putting that closest to my sun and blending out. Now what you want to do is take your blending brush, start from the bottom, start from your lightest parts, and work your way up, touching very lightly just to get out those brush strokes. So I'm going to start with defining my clouds with a dark blue gray. And so I've actually mixed black, the sky blue, and a little bit of white. And what I'm doing is I am using a reference photo for sky um, over an ocean. And um, it's actually one I took off the coast of Charleston. We went on a sunset cruise and had one of the most beautiful sunsets, so I snapped lots of photos. So if you're not using a reference photo, if you're just following along with my painting, it might be a little bit harder to decipher where your shadows should go, 
So I would recommend that you actually either use the final image of this painting or a picture from nature. It doesn't have to be over an ocean, just a good picture from of the sky to give you an idea of how you want your, your clouds to look. You do want to put your shadows towards the top on these clouds because the sun is coming from the bottom. So I'm just taking a larger filbert brush and I'm just using a very light circular motion to blend this out. Clouds are probably the most challenging thing to learn how to paint and I'm still no expert but I continue to practice and I have been told that the best way to learn how to paint clouds is to keep practicing and keep painting them. So you can get tips and tricks but the best way to learn is to just really play with the paint. So using that same color I was using before, which again was just a little bit of black, the tiniest, tiniest amount, a little bit of the sky blue and white, and then added some purple, and I'm going to put in some more shadows on top of the ones that I've already made, as well as adding in some to the top right corner. Now I'm going to go in and apply a pretty thick coat of white paint with a little bit of orange mixed in and I'm doing this along the bottom of where I want my clouds to be. And I'm going to go back in with that filbert brush and blend these out. And you don't want it to be too much paint that it'll cover the whole area, but you want it to be enough to create a border as well as giving enough paint to move around and play with. So you're going to see that I did start with a whimsy effect on the clouds and then I changed my mind <laughs> kind of halfway through. It is better if you're going to do whimsy clouds, it's much better to use a fan brush than a filbert brush.
again, you just want to take your time and really lightly blend the paint and move it around. If you feel like something is working and it's looking cloud-like, then leave it. It is really easy to get carried away and to overwork your paint. And then you just kind of get a blank background again. So less is more. If you're not liking the way it turns out, um, it's always a good idea to take a step back far away from the painting and come back and look at it maybe in an hour just to give yourself some time and your eyes to refocus. I am going to speed through some of these details. This is actually where I was putting in more of those whimsy details and decided that I didn't like them and I didn't, even though this is what my reference photo mimicked, it just wasn't turning out the way I was hoping. And I just felt like more of a bubble style cloud would go better with this painting. Okay, so this is where I decided I did not like how they were turning out. So I am actually going to go back in with some blue paint and clean up the different designs of my cloud. Just kind of take out some of that harsh light blue that I had added in. It's always a good idea to wait till you're done with your painting to add your bright white features. Even though it looks white on the camera, it actually was more of a blue-gray, very light shade. So I'm just taking my darker blue shade from the background and putting that in to kind of take out some of that cloud detail. To erase something if you're using oil paints is really helpful if you're using that darker color or a lighter color to wipe your brush in between applying. All right, so now that I've cleaned up the shapes of my clouds, I'm gonna go ahead and go back in with my darker shade. And still pull the shadows to the top of the clouds because they are being lit from underneath by the sun. I'm going to add in some highlights on the clouds using a white and peach color blended in. And I've just mixed that on my palette with the original, and then I've also um, dabbed 
kind of wiped it across where I would like it to be. Um, you can see some of my palette knife has a little more orange than other sides of it. So I did not mix it completely. It really just depends on how much control you'd like to have. I feel like clouds are all different levels of color, so I don't like it to be exactly perfect. You're going to use that same filbert brush and just blend it out in a circular motion. And blend it out up and away and make sure that there's no harsh edges. If you feel like you've gotten too much paint on and it's not really blending and it's more creating a stark background, you can actually wipe off your paintbrush and go back in, pick up more of that color, wipe it off again, and that should get you back to a nice light. Less is more when it comes to clouds. You can always add more paint, so just start with the least amount of paint on your brush as possible. Even when I'm putting in the paint with the palette knife, I'm using just the edge and I plan on blending that paint out quite a ways. All right, for the horizon, I'm going to use a purple lavender color with a little bit of black and a little bit of white mixed in, very thin. And I'm using the same brush, but a smaller brush would be easier than um, the one I'm using. And what I'm going to do is just do small horizontal lines across the horizon to mimic clouds in the distance. And you can see that these are kind of messy, but I planned on blending them out again. I'm also going to take the leftover paint of that purple and gray on my brush and bring it in that upwards globe-like effect into the sky on both sides. Again, go in with your blending brush and just kind of lightly wipe those away.
You can see this time I came in with a smaller liner brush and I'm just creating a small batch of clouds off in the distance on the right side, um, giving it more of a stacking sensation on the right and thinner on the left so that again, it does feel like the angle of the sky is bigger on the right side. Now you could do this however you'd like. You could make it more even on both sides. That would make it very simple. Or you can keep it at an angle like I did. Once you're done adding in your purples and pinks, um, you will go back in and add some more of that bright orange and just blend it out in both to the left and the right. You do want to make sure to concentrate your orange and red colors closest to the sun. Also, it would be better to wait until the paint has dried completely before trying to add your sun back in. But I am going to start with a light orange. One that's just a shade or two lighter than my background. I'm showing you there my apricot color that I love to use for the sunset. I just feel like it's the perfect color to create that bright sun. I usually go over my sun several times, but I always start with a very dark orange and work my way lighter and lighter from there. Alright, the rest of the sky, I'm going to let it dry for a little bit so that I can come back in with the brighter whites and maybe a, few, a little bit of the orange colors um, on it to give it a little more of the dimension. I'm going to go ahead and start adding in my waterline. Again, if you are doing this painting to sell or to really enhance your skills, you'd want to go a lot slower than I'm showing you. And you really want to take your time on this horizon line. It's super important that your horizon line is perfectly straight to give it a illusion of going off into nowhere. So we still want the sky to feel like a globe effect, but we want our horizon line to be straight. For this color, I'm using a dark blue, black, and mixed in some of the liquid original. And since this is a sunset or a sunrise, whatever you'd like it to be, um, your ocean is really going to be pretty dark. And in my photo, this is what the darkest color is. And I will go back in with the highlights on top of that.
Okay, so I'm going in with a flat angled brush now. I'm taking that dark navy with a little bit of black mixed in. I'm just going back and forth on the canvas. And just trying to keep my lines as straight as possible. Again, this tutorial is just meant to be fun to kind of help you sharpen some skills. So don't stress if your lines do get a little bit crooked. Now we're going to put some trees off in the horizon. I'm actually using the same color with a little bit more of a black tone to it. I'm just going to do small circular motions and I am using a fine liner brush to do this. Again, this is because this is what's in my reference photo. And once I've done that, I am taking my flat angle brush and just creating a clean line underneath where those trees in the distance might have some land. Alright, for the water detail, you're going to start at the horizon line and you're going to use a small angled brush. This would be best to do on all dry paint. The trick is to put in small dashes closest to the sun. You want to use a light blue-gray. And then as you get closer to the foreground, you can actually do longer swoops like what you see I'm doing here. Just to kind of create some movement in the water. Now you'll notice I changed my brush. The brush I was using was slightly too large for this canvas size. So I did switch down to a smaller size so I could control the paint a little bit more.
All right, so we're back the next day in the evening. I'm going to add in some more color now that the first layer of paint is fairly dry. I'm going to start by brightening up my horizon and putting in some more orange. I really want to make that pop. Going in with a light lavender color. The trick is to blend in a little bit of the blue sky color to that purple and white so that it just really gives it a nice transition into the edge. So when you blend this back and forth with the orange, it will just make it look like it does in nature. Take the same purple color that we worked into the horizon and I'm going to start to work it up into the clouds to help bring the upper clouds into the bottom of the frame. With this, I'm really just having fun with it and putting a cloud wherever I feel like there should be one. When you're working on a sunset or sunrise painting, you do want to concentrate your orange, pinks, and purples towards the horizon line and slowly fade them out as it gets closer to the top of the painting.
because I work on the sky, I am adding in some more bright orange. Orange and yellows and reds are actually very translucent on the canvas and as you layer them. So you do usually need to do several coats if you want to have a nice, true bright orange. Then I'm just taking the leftover paint that's on my brush and blending it into the clouds that I've already started to form. So over the next few minutes, I'm really just going to play around with paint and colors and really just try to get the sky to look like it's one and it belongs together. It's so really gradient up my oranges and purples and lower my shadows on my top clouds. Once you have your sky and clouds the way you like them, the very last touch for your painting would be to brighten up your sun one more time. For the horizon, I like to use a bright orange closest to the sun. I will lighten that orange as I get closer to the edge. With a painting this small, you can really just use your paintbrush. The paint will thin out and color out on its own because orange is translucent. Um, as you get closer to the edge, I'm using a lavender um, with the sky blue mixed in. Uh, very, very, very little of that blue um, so that the color is still purple. And then a little bit of white. What that does is it helps give that textured look of the horizon going on forever and ever. And it's also going to help gradient the skies and bring everything back together. Once you've cleaned up your sky and your horizon and the bottom of your paint is completely dry, you're gonna wanna go back in with your dark navy blue and a little bit of black, a shade darker than what we were using before. Um, so more really to the black side um, because this is a sunset and it's meant to look really far away. Those trees should be basically black. Um, you won't be able to see much of them at all. And I am just using a small brush to make small circles and unevenness. And I'm trying to make that even on each side. Again, I strongly recommend using painter's tape or a ruler for this part so that your horizon is perfectly straight. I'm using a straight edge brush so it does make it easier. And so I'm going to make each side a little bit thicker and a little bit taller. And then I'm going to make a straight line underneath the sun all the way across. All right, so now I'm going to start putting in the water details. Um, I'm using just a shade lighter of the navy with the black mixed together on a fine liner brush. And what you're gonna do is you're going to make small dashes across the horizon that get slightly longer as you come forward. So for the horizon, I'm just touching the brush, the paintbrush to the canvas. Um, so again, they almost look like small dashes, very, very small. And then as I get closer, those will get longer and we'll create more of a wave-like detail.
I do not have the best lighting in this setup, so the best way to see this fine detail is to use a screenshot of the beginning image or the ending in image on the video and really zoom in so that you can see that these are really just small little dashes that create the appearance of water moving. This is very tedious, it does take a while, but it will give you a very realistic look on your water. And so it's really up to you on whether you want to take the time to do all of this little detail. Um, obviously the water before um, was okay too. It had some movement in it, so there's no right or wrong way. This is a little more advanced and it takes a little bit of time. I'm not doing it perfectly. I'm really just showing you some of the ways that I've learned to create the movement of ocean water in the distance. Um, if you really want to learn this and take your time and, and do it the right way, I would probably tape off one inch sections and move forward from there. So start in the back and make your smallest dashes first, then remove your tape, let it dry, tape off the next section and so on. That will give you a very, very perfect um, crisp line. And then you'll see that I added in some lighter color. My brush actually just accidentally got white on it. <laughs> um, so I do actually go in and fix this. So um, we're gonna speed up and, and so you can just paint along at this point. As you get closer to the foreground, you are going to make your brush strokes a little bit wider and deeper. And you'll see that I'm moving in a zigzag pat pattern, which is really what you see on the reflection of the water. And it's just creating that movement up close. And really with anything that's on this scale of detail, it is just a good idea to practice. The more you do it, the more your hand and your body work together, or I guess your mind, <laughs> your mind and your hand work together to create the look that you have in your head. Um, I tried it several times before I ever was able to do it freely. And again, this painting, is really, um, you know, just me having fun and using some of the techniques that I've learned to, to teach you guys something simple. Um, so I'm not taking it too seriously and neither should you, um, you know, get your techniques down, get comfortable with them and then attempt a serious painting. Or don't, you don't have to be serious either. All right, and then also I will note that most art teachers will teach you to work from the back to the front. I rarely listen to the rules. <laughs> and so you'll see when I'm painting my tutorials, I kind of move around. Um, so that doesn't mean that you need to do what I do. If you are someone who likes order and neatness, you know, I may not be the best tutorial guide for you. Um, but you know, it's really important to just really have fun and practice your techniques and do it the way that feels comfortable for you.
once you've put in some of your detail, um, go back and kind of shade some of the areas in on one side or the other of where your lines are, just to give it more of a realistic effect. You don't want to leave just the stark lines um, so that it doesn't really look like a honeycomb that way. I want to add some shading in there. The larger the painting, the more detail you're going to have to go into. Um, so if you are still learning, um, you know, practice on a smaller scale until you get comfortable with the shade and really study water. You know, use reference photos and, and study the heck out of water. I used to not be able to paint water or a sky without a reference photo. It's been about three years of me constantly using reference photos and studying out in nature and going to places to paint. Um, and so now I have a lot in my brain that I can just kind of pull from. Just one of those core memories. <laughs> All right, now around your sun in the middle, um, in the very back, you do not want to put the dark water there. Um, we're actually going to go in with a lighter color. So you're going to leave that. And you do want to leave a line for the reflection. I'm going to do a very, um, I'm going to do a very simple reflection where the sun that's setting It'll be smallest in the back and the reflection will get bigger as it comes forward.
If you do mess up on this fine detail, um, don't worry, you can let it dry and go back in with the base color and just clean up any of those lines. Lastly, I am going to use my blending brush to just kind of feather out some of those details. All right, and so now it's time for the reflection. I'm using a white with a little bit of blue and a little bit of orange mixed in, um, so not bright white. And I'm gonna go down the center and just kind of lightly touch again, starting very small in the back and going wider as I get closer to the front. Um, it will start to overlap with the dark areas that you made for the waves. Make sure that if you are going over any of those areas that you're doing them on the top of the dark line so that it looks like the sunset is kissing the top of that wave. If you go over the blue, the dark blue with it, then it'll really mess up that illusion. And so you really want to dust it over the top of the darkest line. And as I get closer to the front there, you'll kind of see what I mean. Thank you so much for painting with me today. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you can join me on my next painting adventure.